The subprimer we have here is the short loin, the bone-in short loin, where we'll cut the bone-in steaks, the porterhouse, and the T-bone. If we remember back to Dr. Griffin's fabrication of the entire side, we'll remember that the short loin it has both the strip loin and the tenderloin present. The short loin contains a major portion of the backbone here, the vertebra, separating internally that separate the tenderloin from the strip loin. Prior to portioning, there's a couple of things we need to trim. There's some heavy connective tissue on the top side of the tenderloin here that will remove this. Some of the heavy connective tissue over the top side along the bone surface here. We'll also trim, trim away some of the heavy kidney fat. Now that we've trimmed this subprime, we're ready to start portioning, and we'll do this on the bandsaw. And we'll always start from this bigger end. This is where the tenderloin is bigger in diameter, and as you see, as we work towards the rib end of this short loin, the tenderloin starts to taper off. We're going to face cut the square of that first cut so that we have a good first steak. It starts on the large end where the tenderloin is larger. You can see the diameter of that tenderloin there. Portion that steak. Now he's trimming the fat around the external surface. Make sure the tail length is within spec. And again, bone dust on the surface that will scrape off prior to packaging. We have the portion short loin. Again, we started on the large end, the sirloin end of the, of the short loin, where the tenderloin is largest and also has the gluteus, gluteus muscle or the sirloin muscle there. We move forward in the, in the short loin, cutting porterhouses, then T-bones, then an end piece at the end that we would bone out and have an opportunity to make a boneless or a bone-in strip steak. We look at these steaks from the sirloin end. We see the larger fillet muscles and the presence of the gluteus muscle. As we begin to move towards the front of the subprimal, this is where we get into what do we call a porterhouse and what do we call a T-bone. What we're looking for is at least an inch and a half in diameter of that fillet. You can see we're over two inches here. As we move down, we're right at an inch and a half here, right at just over an inch and a half still. We get down to this stake, what we're going to call our last porterhouse, because as we get to this next stake, the measurement on this tenderloin is just under an inch and a half. So we'll go ahead and call these last two steaks T-bones because of the size of the tenderloin. We're just under an inch and a half here and around an inch and a quarter here.